Greetings, Stars fans. This is game 41 against the New York Islanders. Your Dallas Stars fall 6 to 5. It is now 6 of the last 7 road games have been losses. Not exactly what we were hoping for. They suffer their first uh, back-to-back loss. If you didn't know, this is the Two Brothers Mic'd Up show. We sit down, play a game of NHL after every Stars game to bring you our thoughts, comments, and we discuss it for you. As always, we start off each video with predictions that we had in the last video, so always stick around. Quinn, you liked a score of 4-2 to two for the Stars if they were going to win. You also liked a score of 5-2 to two for the Islanders if they were going to come on top. Almost was the case. For some reason, I thought it was going to be a low, low scoring game for some reason. But, of course, the past four games I didn't really take into account because I thought both these teams are going to be on a back-to-back. So, it might be a low scoring game. But, I mean, the past like four games with the Stars, it's been like 12 goals, 10 goals, 9 goals. So, I mean, I think the lowest scoring game was whenever the Stars actually won uh, against the Islanders. I like to score of three to one for the Stars if they were going to win, and I like to score of two to nothing for the Islanders. My predictions were just completely wrong. So let's go down the list and let's see who the scores were for the six to five score. We have Vernon Fiddler. Uh, about six minutes in, we have Anders Lee on the power play. We have Patrick Sharp continuing to be hot. We have Kyle Oposo with about a minute 30 left in that first period. I think that one really hurt the the Stars. And then we get Kyle Oposo again, Grabowski, Clutterbuck. And then we get Nachushkin twice in the third period with a Clutterbuck shorthanded and a Spezza goal. So, from the start of the game, how how did you feel going into this game? How did you feel about it, Quinn? I felt good, actually. I had high hopes for the Stars. You know, we always seem to play really good against the Islanders, and uh, they pointed out that the stats were that they Islanders always play good against us. So... Where they like won like the last like three against us that we've played them, and they've all been high scoring games. So, well, I wasn't really surprised to see it go that way. Yeah, um, of course we uh, we thought this would be a bounce back game. We thought the Stars might have taken something from the Devils game and learned from it to know to not really get outworked as hard as they did in uh, Newark against the Devils. How'd you like the Dallas Stars' work ethic in this game? You know, it's it's kind of a double-edged sword. I liked their work ethic, but I think their work ethic in this game crippled them. I feel that they might have tried too hard to make the fancy play, the fancy pass, the fancy shot. It's it's kind of almost like they're getting in a pattern. When you when you watch it as a spectator, you you always think that you know the best part that they should do. You know, you think they should shoot when they should pass. You think they should pass when they should shoot. I think this was one of those games where a lot of spectators were correct in their assumptions. Yeah, I uh, I think the, the Stars' work ethic actually worked out pretty well. But only whenever the Stars were already down and out. You know, they ju- they just didn't have anything else to lose except for the game. Whenever they got down six to three, so essentially they just threw everything at the and the kitchen sink that they had in the third period, which is what hurt them. They started off the game great. I mean, Fiddler got the the first goal, and then uh, they they responded with a, with an Anders Lee goal. But then we we answered pretty much uh, right back thir- uh, three minutes later with Patrick Sharp. But again, we see the Stars take the first penalty in the game. And I think for the second straight game in a row, it's within the first 30 seconds of the game. And again, it's the person that 
uh, that rolled out uh, the Devils game in overtime. Jamie Benn takes it. Now, let's talk about Jamie Benn's game. I felt he was just a huge hindrance to the team today. He wasn't being smart at all. He was... I mean, if you see his post game, you can tell that he was very upset with how he played. He called his uh, his game selfish, stupid. You know, those are those are the things that he was talking about his game, and I agree. What do you? How do you feel about that game? I completely agree. Jamie Ben was his personality on ice was more of like a Roussel. It seemed like he was trying to agitate the Islanders, and the Islanders weren't biting. He takes the first penalty. He takes the second penalty. And, you know, it just kind of uprooted the Dallas Stars into a penalty-killing nightmare. You see them going on, what was it, seven, seven penalties that they had overall? And they looked scrambled in every single one of them. Yeah. Going back to the uh, the work ethic of the game, something that we commented on in the previous video against the Devils that the Dallas Stars fourth line didn't show up like at all. They weren't even a factor in the Devils game, but this game they actually were a factor in the Fiddler goal. Like it seems as if the Stars are actually watching our broadcasts on their on their games and addressing as to what we're saying. Coincidence? I think not. But the the fourth line really set a tone for this game, and that's what I liked seeing. I you know Foxa was actually you know relative in this game. Fiddler had a nice goal with the Foxa driving to the net and follows up on the rebound. But then you see a lot of their effort was taken away with the Jamie Ben double minor, with Eakin taking a high sticking call. After Jamie Bean gets the double minor for high sticking as well. I mean, a lot of their uh, work that was being done in the first period to try to, you know, get some separation, they just let it take... They, they just took it away from themselves. They shot themselves in the foot so much. And the, the player that I would like to highlight for being the best player that we've seen in overall in the uh, past week or so, Patrick Sharp. Talk about Patrick Sharp and how... What, what were your expectations for Sharp coming into this season, and has he exceeded or has he been exactly what you thought as of this point? I think he, he's been a little bit more than what I thought. Like, I knew he was going to come in. I knew he was going to score goals. I knew he was going to bring that that cup experience that he got in Chicago. But he's, he's actually exceeding my expectations. I thought he was going to be maybe, you know, like a 40-point getter for the season. He'll have, like, 15 goals, a couple assists. But, he, I mean, he's, he's on a good pace to keep up with Sagan and Ben. You know, he's... He may be close to, if not already having 40 points. But he's, his 15 goals are what's keeping this team alive right now. Yeah, he is definitely, you know, keeping this team going. And it, it, it's really nice to see. Now, shifting in, I, I, I hate to, you know, make a negative... Uh, discussion about this game but there was a lot to not like and it goes with the defense I think uh, Klingberg and Goligoski had a, a, another bad game I you you could see Klingberg getting beat on two goals at least uh, Goligoski he has that goal go off his skate yeah, I guess you can't really fault him on that but I, I didn't really like a lot of his uh, game uh, Oduya and Demirs, they were, I mean, especially Demirs with his idiotic play. Idiotic play. You see Oduya get beat on the, uh, I think it was Strom when Oduya and Goligoski were in the corner together. Strom just beats him. 
like clean out, just makes a nasty move towards the towards the net and makes a pass over to I think it was Grabowski that gets the goal just on the back doorstep. Kari, this is this is a, a lot of stuff that when I was watching uh, post game stuff, this is what Ruff had to say. You can't fault Kari on a lot of the goals that he gave up today. How do you feel about that? I would say I agree halfway. Half of the goals were his fault. Half the goals weren't his fault. The first goal, obviously his fault. You see and it looks like he loses his footing and just does not get set. Yeah, he wasn't even ready for it. Yeah. It looked... It, it, it kind of like what somebody said when we were watching the game. It looked like he still had his skate guards on from the way he flopped around. Yeah. And the Oposo goal, he gives up a huge rebound on that. Uh, the uh, Grabowski goal, he wasn't even... He didn't even know that Grabowski was there because, you know, he the, the defense just wasn't even paying attention to him. He wasn't paying attention to him. Um... My reaction to Ruff saying that is, did he actually watch the game? Like, Kari was bad. And I know in a, in a previous couple of videos, I went on to say if Kari... I, I went through so many emotions through this game that I'm I'm not really sure that I, I understood the thought process because after Kari gave up that that clutterbuck goal that that shorthanded goal I was like get him out but then I was contradicting myself by saying Kari needs to stay in the net he needs to take a hard loss a lot of the goals he gave up he just didn't seem ready for he didn't seem ready for this game which which I'm 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 thinking why do you have Kari in the Islanders game in the first place. Why not have him in the Devils game? The Devils are not as strong as the Islanders. That's just a fact. Why would you have Kari in against a high-powered offense like the Islanders? If Especially if he's been shaky for the past couple of games. It doesn't make any sense. Um, I think Niemi would have handled this game a lot, a lot better. Um... Let's talk about the Jason Demers penalty. How did you take the penalty? Or what did you see at first? And then knowing that he gets the five minute and then the misconduct, how how, how do you feel about that? You know, from the from the get go, while watching while watching the play go on, I see him fall down and I actually think to myself, it would be terrible if he got hit right now. Because of the awkward position he would be in. He's like on his knees. He's not ready for a hit first off. And Demirs doesn't even let up. Which is kind of surprising to see. He goes for the full contact hit. His hips hit straight into his head. And there may not have been an injury on the play. But that's the good news. That he didn't sustain an injury from this. I know I was I was reading a lot of posts about it shouldn't have been a misconduct. It should have been a made. It should have been a minor penalty only. But how do you know that that there won't be any concussive symptoms later? It's a hit to the head. I honest a, a direct hit to the head. I feel it should it was worthy of a five minute major and a misconduct. Yeah. See the egregious part about it is that if you go back and watch the replay the when Demirs makes contact with Clutterbuck the puck is like nine feet away from Clutterbuck and Clutterbuck is down on one knee it looks like he has his arm up on the boards to try to get himself up and then Demirs he looks like he wants to put a lot of his weight into his arms to try to brace himself against the glass when he makes that hit but if your hip is next to a guy's head, why would you think of making that play? Why would you even think? You're not, you're not even eliminating him from the play. 
and you went out of your way to make that hit. Your ass needs to stay in front of the net. Demir's, this was a selfish, idiotic play, and I, I honestly hope he gets at least one game because that will hopefully teach him never to make that play again. It doesn't matter if you think that I didn't I didn't like Ruff saying that uh, Clutterbuck has uh, a history of diving and it didn't look that serious and that Clutterbuck sold it. Look, it doesn't matter if he sold it or not. Just think if that was Jamie Benn on on one knee and Clutterbuck does that to him. We would be calling for his freaking head on a pike right now. We would be saying throw the book at him because because Ben would have been defenseless. Clutterbuck was defenseless. He wasn't in the play, nowhere near the puck. He didn't make he didn't need to make that hit. It was so stupid. So so stupid. Talk about Quinn. Uh, talk about Dallas's third period. I didn't see a lot of it because I, I didn't want to see any more of this game. You go ahead and talk about how you felt. I, I know the Stars start tried to rally back, but it felt like too little, too late. That's exactly what it was. They uh, they came out. They got they got the goal from Nichushkin, and I was like, "Hey, we're back in this." And. The next thing you know is they're on a power play and Klingberg gets outworked so hard on the power play, he loses the puck, he gets, first off, he gets beat to the puck, and Klingberg is supposed to be one of our faster defensemen, which, so that's, that's kind of a scary thought that he's getting beat. He gets outmuscled. And it's passed straight to the middle of the net where there's three people around Clutterbuck, but nobody does anything. And he has wide open net to, surprise, surprise, glove side, top shelf on Kari. Short side. That seems to be Kari's kryptonite, and, you know, I'm starting to think that that is what teams are being taught now against Kari Lettman, is to go short side, uh, glove side on him. They they rally back to get a goal from the Chushkin again on the same power play. Spezza happens to get a lucky, well needed fifth goal at like the two minute mark or something. And then we see a complete breakdown of the Dallas Stars once we pull the goalie again. The thing that irked me the most was Goligoski has the puck, wide open shot to the net, and he elects to turn around and try to make a drop pass to somebody else with five seconds left in the game. I don't know why he didn't choose to take the shot. If he got scared that he might score a goal... Or I don't I don't know what was going through his head, but it kind of blew the last chance, and that seems to be what is crippling this team: pass first, shoot later. Oh no, I totally agree that Dallas is sometimes too fancy, too fancy for their own good. That this team we've I've said it before in previous videos this this team needs to be more selfish with its star players. I don't understand the trying to force pass and then getting nothing out of it it's it's something that we don't need in our game let our star players shoot the puck i mean the bright point out of this game has to be nichushkin i don't want to be too negative because um you know the stars did try to rally back into this game. You know they showed fight, but you know it was that too little, too late thing. But Nachushkin gets two goals. That's good to see him uh, off the Schneid. Um, is there any other positives out of this game besides Nachushkin and uh, Sharp? You know I did like the work mentality that they had for parts of the game. 
that was a real positive, especially when they're down. You know, you see them trying to work to get back into the game, but they're working themselves into submission. I just feel like they're trying too much and that they need to simplify their game. Go back to basics. You know, let's not let's not make this into like a Coach Carter moment where you have to make a pass seven times before you can shoot the puck. Yeah. Shoot the puck, shoot the puck, shoot the puck. Yeah, the Stars have played at such a breakneck speed all season. I hope that this is not something that is starting to catch up to them. Now, granted, within the next like couple of weeks, they're going to get extended breaks with the All-Star break and then the World Cup break and everything like that, but some of our star players are going to be playing in that, so our depth is what's going to be getting the breaks, which is good because I I think our depth could use the, the break to recharge their batteries because I think our star players can maintain the hustle that they have but I especially want to see Klingberg get his game back because he just looked tired uh, towards the middle of the second period going into the third period talk about what are your rating what was your rating for the game I would have to say probably a D the only thing that kept him from an F is that they did score five goals, but this really should have been a game that sh- could have been won. Penalties killed this team. Overthinking killed this team. Not being able to keep passes on your stick, overpassing, is what's killing this team right now. If they shoot the puck more, good things will happen. It's like Gretzky says. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So, I think Dallas Stars should learn something from that and just start shooting the puck. Yeah, I gave a D plus, and the plus only comes from the work ethic that they had in the third period, whenever you already didn't have anything left to lose. Uh, Stars play, or actually, give an overall rating of... This, since it's now the halfway point of the season, where do you rate the season so far? I'd probably say a B minus. They're they're winning the games that they kind of shouldn't be winning. That are the more difficult games to play against, like the St. Louis Blues, the the top tier games. They're winning those games, but the disappointing fact is that when we play the Columbuses. The Devils, the Carolinas, you know. It's just shocking to see this team falling behind to them when they obviously have the skill to outmatch them. Yeah, at the halfway point, uh, I'm shocked that Kari has maintained the mediocrity that he has, even with the record that he has. It's it's His record is not... Uh, showing of what he is actually playing like. Uh, I give a B plus A minus just because they've held on to first place for so long. They've stayed in the top two um, for so long, and they are winning the games that last season they weren't winning. But they're also losing games that they should be winning. So as of right now, I'm very happy with the halfway point of the season. Let's go into predictions for game 42 against the New York Rangers. What predictions do you have for that one? Well, I feel that as long as the Dallas Stars, you know, take my advice and shoot the puck, you know, I feel that they will come on top. They just got to simplify that game like I keep saying. I know it's probably some of y'all are tired of hearing it, but that's how you get the that's how you get the point across. Is Dallas coming on top? We'll say five to three, given the fact that they've been scoring high numbers over the last couple games. And if New York comes on top, I feel Nash will have a breakthrough game. I feel 
six to four. So another high scoring game, huh? Uh, Dallas has usually played pretty good against New York. They, I know they beat them in New York uh, last year in overtime. I think it'll be another close game. I like a score of five to four if Dallas is going to win. And I like a score of four to three if New York is going to win. I think it'll be a tight, hopefully defensive game that... Uh, Dallas puts in for work. I, I hope that they bring the work ethic that they should learn from the Devils and Islanders game and bring it into the Rangers game. Because you're going to Madison Square Garden. This is one of the best places to play hockey. And if you don't show up for this game, you might as well not show up for any other road games. Because if you can't find any effort to put in on the Rangers in Madison Square Garden... I mean, it, it'll be hard to find effort anywhere else. So that'll do it. Remember to subscribe, share, like the video, leave any kind of feedback that you would like to give us. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you didn't like. Uh, you know, tell people about it. Help us grow this into something that you would show off to your mom, your grandma, and girlfriend. Remember, this is a show for fans, by fans, and as always, tune in next time.